Hello, today is Thursday the 2nd of December. In this video, we'll run through some indices, but then some currency pairs. I thought I'd start with the USA 30, which is the Dow Jones. And we all know that equity markets have had a really pretty solid run uh, of late. You'll just notice if we look at this index, how it's had such a great uh, rise through into sort of halfway this year, but then it's just really slowed down a little bit. And I think we're seeing that with a lot of indices. We're certainly seeing it with the Australian, or the ASX 200. Uh, I've drawn in this line here at 35,600, having met resistance here for a few days, falling away, getting close for a good two weeks here, just getting just shy of that and just being unable to move through, getting back up to it again, um, breaking through, coming back, finding a little bit of support there. And then again, when it uh, rally, sorry, fell from its all-time highs, came down to this level, 35,600, bounced off. It found some support there for several days before this sudden drop lower and we see now that it's sort of returned to really the bottom of that range where it's been for the last five or six months and we're also seeing that with the ASX 200 index where you know it's had a pretty good rise uh, after the sort of pandemic announcement then just slowing off and just easing up a little bit over the last few months trading in between ranges and we see that now the ASX 200 index just like the Dow Jones, you know, it's just sort of come back to the bottom of that range and it's just holding on to this 7,200, maybe 7,150 level, uh, just holding on to that and bouncing off and trying to find some support there. You'll notice, you know, this is obviously a very dominant candlestick. Uh, it's, you know, it's um, opened up here, traded up, tried to get high and then just fallen again and fallen back down to below that 7,200 level. And then the next day, you know, uh, come up on open, try to you know, move higher, but again, has just come back, even traded a bit lower, but sort of just really, you can see physically, it's just sort of, there's a lid up here. There's just a lot of excess selling, a lot of excessive selling, keeping a lid on prices and, and pushing or trying to push stocks generally, obviously, but the indices uh, lower. We'll start with the Australian dollar. And this uh, we know has uh, really struggled just in the last few weeks from a three month high up here at 75.50 having fallen now for the last month, moving through some key levels that have previously provided some support and resistance. We know the 74 level has provided a lot of resistance. 73 has provided a lot of support. Yes, it did find a little bit of support here at 73, but then continued lower. 72 did nothing. However, 71 at the moment is providing a bit of support to it. So you can see this 71 level here, and that's at a, what's that, a nine month low or thereabouts. So having been up here at 80 cents and quite a strong fall here just over the last you know during these few months here getting down to 71 and then finding a lot of support at that 71 so there's no surprise with how well it rallied back up off that after such a strong fall no surprise now it's sort of just holding on to that a little bit and we can see where it's traded down to 71 just over the last few days and found a little bit of support there but it's still maintaining that pressure on that 71 level uh, obviously, the short to medium term trend is uh, down, having fallen over the last month. And then if we just zoom out a little bit further, the next obvious level is 70. To me, it's a little bit more significant being a multiple of 10 cents, being a nice round number. And the other thing with 70 is if it starts to fall below that, we get down to a completely new range where people think of the Australian dollar in completely different terms because the price now has a six in front of it rather than a seven or up here at an eight. So you can see back through here at 70 cents, where over the course of maybe around six weeks or so, it found a lot of support at that 70 cents. And certainly that was the beginning of this very strong rise up through here. So we are not far away, if it does break through this 71 cents, of perhaps retesting that 70 and seeing what support, what buying is willing to step in there and prop the Australian dollar up. Looking at the euro, we've also identified some key levels here at 119 and 116. When we were tracking the 116 level, we said, you know, there might be a little bit of a rally back up through here. But if there was, you wouldn't be at all surprised to see that 116 level providing some resistance. That just never happened. It just continued to decline. You know, we have about six red candles there in a row. So fairly strong selling, pushing the euro lower. Getting down to 112, though, another sort of round number. Well, multiple of one cent in this particular case. And if we zoom out, we'll, you know, see some occasions where price has reacted at that level and we're seeing that right now getting down to 1112 or 1.12 1 
and hitting that level, uh, finding some support here, not trading a lot here, and then moving back higher. So what do we see now? Well, clearly the medium term trend is down. The fact that it was above 1.22, now just a little bit over 1.12, so that's 10 US cents, which is a fair move over the course of six months or so. That's a very strong decline. And you know who are we to say that it's just going to rally back up and regain all of those losses? Certainly not anytime soon. So we're going to see a little bit of a rally here. And you know, if it just struggles up here, at sort of 113.50 or 114, wouldn't be at all surprised for that medium term downtrend just to continue and perhaps push down through this 1.12 and continue to fall lower. There's certainly plenty of room there for it to fall if it wants to. And again, if it was to rally up, and it's a fair move from 113 up to 116, three US cents, if it was to move 300 pips up to 1.16, you know, I, I would think this level would again provide some resistance and perhaps try to keep a lid on prices and keep it below uh, that range there. Another one is the British pound, similar to the euro, the 1.36 level instead, uh, providing some support through this period here. Uh, this one we did see a drop through, came back up and got to 1.36 exactly almost, and you know found some resistance there and then pushed it away. And we're also seeing a similar picture, just a decline. If it was to rally back up, maybe it'll stop below this previous peak. Even if it was to rally all the way up, back up to 1.36, it would be reasonable to expect some selling pressure there and a fair amount of resistance, you know, keeping a lid on prices and keeping it below that level. Now, just zooming out a little bit more, certainly the 1.30 level, just being a multiple of 10 cents, is some distance away yet. I mean, it's still around 270 pips away, so it's still a fair way away. But uh, certainly you cannot, you know, doubt or certainly can't question the strength of this medium to longer term downtrend over the course of the last six months, you know, having fallen from what 1.42 now down to 1.32, similarly euro, it's fallen around 10 US cents. So it's certainly been a very strong uh, decline, that is for sure. Look at the Japanese yen. This has been a little bit interesting where this one point or 114.5 level, um, you know, was certainly providing some resistance through here over the last uh, month or so got through it, then the resistance kicked in again, but then it got through again. Now, what we're expecting to see is if it was to stand tall, it's going to come back down and find some support at that level at 114.50. And if it did, to move back up and then continue to move higher, and it certainly did not do that. This very dominant candle, the largest candlestick you'll see in this entire chart, is the one in the top right-hand corner where it just smashes back through that 114.5 level. So now we start revisiting the 112. 112 has been a level of significance now for some time. You can see it back uh, over the course of the last almost, you know, two and a half years where 112 has provided here a lot of resistance. Again, uh, a lot of resistance here and more recently, just a little bit of resistance here and then it finally broke through. Uh, so it'd be reasonable to expect that if it actually did continue to decline a little bit more, that that 112 level may just step in and provide some support to that. And then we may all of a sudden just see it starting to move in a range again, which it does have a habit of doing. And we can see really here over the course of months, it was trading in quite a narrow range from 109 to 111, just 200 pips range for about six months, which is a narrow range for most. And what we have here is a 250 pip range. So perhaps we are going to just see it trade sideways for the next few months or so, remain within that range. And for a lot of people probably present very few trading opportunities as a result of that range. Well, that's it for today. Today, Thursday, the 2nd of December, just ran through two indices and some currency pairs for you. I hope that was of some value to you and I look forward to talking to you again soon.